Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Auto Transport Intel. It is Wednesday. It is noon central time. That means it is time for DOT compliance, where we answer questions. And uh, we've got your DOT guy, Brian Riker. I'm smiling because, yeah, the days are starting to run into each other, and I have to check which day it is so I know which show I'm doing. Um, thank you guys so much for joining. Please do jump into the live chat. Also, feel free to give a like and send a share and copy. Grab the YouTube link, send it to a friend. It's a life preserver. Um, if you know somebody that's approaching a scale and they have, you know, they've rigged something or they're not sure about something or they're just flying by the seat of their pants, you know, there's somebody right now doing that. And because there's too much to know. So Brian wants to help. We're in the live chat. Go ahead and jump in. Ask a question. Right? Ty's like, what day is it? It's, it's well, some people, some people call it hump day. I don't normally do that. Um, but anyways, you can go to autotransportintel.com. Click on sign up. Get on the email list. Talk to Ty. We have a round table coming up. So that's pretty cool. So you'll want to. You want to join us for the roundtable if you want to grow your business, network, live. It's actually really, it is pretty amazing. Um, yes, you can email and talk to people. But there's something special about a live Zoom meeting with folks that you're just meeting and hearing their version of what's going on with their business. So feel free to join us for that. Anyways, it is two after. It is time to go live with Brian. Brian, can you see us and hear us okay? Yes, I can, Jay. Good afternoon. Hey, what is happening? No technical difficulties like last night. Oh, yeah? Oh, I'm checking my <laughs> audio. Mic check, one, two, three. Oh, yeah, that was, yeah, what, uh, it was just one of those things where it just the, didn't connect? The battery was dead in my analog to digital converter for this fancy headset that I'm using. Mm. The green light was still on saying it had power, but I slapped a new battery in it this morning and it works just fine. There you go. That makes a lot of sense. Yes. Um, so, all right, so we're here. Now, I've got a few things that I can share. I will go ahead and do this. Let me just go ahead and kick it off with David. He bets that you can't stump Brian. Go ahead and bring your questions. DOT, FMCSA, IRP. We get a lot of trailer rating and registration questions. Um, in fact, I think we've got one. I've got, I think we got a holdover from last week. That we'll get to. We also, you know, we do the how we doing. <laughs> um, we are trying to help um, because I know, I know there are there are uh, years, if not decades, of um, veteran, uh, you know, well seasoned, full size carriers. I don't want. I'm trying to find something other than super trucker, you know. Um, but, well, well, to me, Super Trucker is the guy that's just as dangerous as the new guy that doesn't know any better because he already knows it all. We, we, we have experienced, seasoned industry professionals that really do have the heart of a teacher and want to help. Yes. OK, good. And that's we're trying to tap into that because we do know by the photos being sent in that there's still plenty of folks out there that they, you know, Saw the Get Rich Quick videos. Probably watching right now. There's a guy watching a Get Rich Quick video right now. Has no idea how to load it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, we want to help cover that. Actually, John sent me this. I think it was last week. Good morning, Jay Ty. My buddy just sent this to me. He works for a classic car place in Lakewood, New Jersey. Uh, sent this job to me last week. Was going to Ohio. Gave him a price for enclosed trailer. And the owner didn't take it. Hey, I can, I'll just wrap it in a saran wrap. Anyways, hired this guy. Uh, this is what you get. Zoom in on the rear wheel of the trailers. What a joke. So, how we doing, Brian? Well, that probably should have been transported a little bit differently. At the end of the day, a car is a car. But something like that that would be difficult to replace probably should have been transported on a little better trailer. I'm not sure about the trailer towed behind the van. I can't tell whether that's a three-quarter ton uh, or what it is. I just tell it's a uh, GM product on the van. Uh, he's not overweight on the trailer, per se. Um, I can't really tell well enough how the vehicles are secured. It looks like we have straps up there. 
again, you get what you pay for. So there's a, either the owner decided to come get it himself or it's a U ship shipper with no numbers, no authority, and probably no insurance. What's the deal? What's he strapped? What's he got going on there? He's reinforced it with a ramp. He's strapped it. It looks it's, like a, it, lo- it looks like the little buggy trailer on the back of the car was just a little bit too close to the end of the trailer. So I'm thinking that he's using the loading ramps as a makeshift trailer extension, which is probably what the uh, viewer that submitted this was getting at with the strap coming over the ramps in the trailer. It looks like it's pretty close to the end. I'm not quite sure. It's hard for me to see on the little screen, and I can't get my laptop to behave this morning. Oh, what uh, what is is anything going to happen? I mean, is anybody going to pull him over? Or, I don't know. What do you? Nothing. Yeah, he could get pulled over if he doesn't put extension lights on the end of the trailer. Some states have rules for how far in from the end of the load your tail lights can be. So some people will fix that. Like you see the oversized loads, they hang lights on their projecting load. Um, Being he's not running with, doesn't appear he's running with numbers or anything on the van. uh, I guarantee you there's no stopping at the scale house. DOT is going to think it's just some guy that has his own car dragging it somewhere. And he'll probably make a nice trip out to Ohio. All right. (laughs) And there's the, Synopsis. You know, I I do want to share. I want to see if I can. Um, somebody sent me a video. Did we already do the it like salvage vehicles on I seventy? Did we do that last week? I don't remember. Right. I'm I'm I think I'm in Groundhog's Day today because I mean I can't remember what day it is. I can't. You had um, me up past my bedtime last night, so I'm shot. That was that would do. That was uh, that was pretty funny. I think I shared it on Dispatching Live. Let's see if we can find that because it is worth it. Stay with us. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This is. Uh... Oh yes, I've seen that. That happens quite often. So here's the here's the first half of the group. Okay, so he's got, right, he's got a trailer. But it's this guy. <laughs> this one here is is funny. I mean, or something. You've got three cars. Two are well, being towed by the front, right? Yeah, and if you look at the, at the van with the trailer, he's towing a third car behind the trailer attached to a hitch on the back of the trailer. How are we doing? Can you do this? Yes and no. They do it every day. And these cars are most likely heading south of the border for export. I used to watch them spend hours in the That's transporter a, lot. Vistaga just said it. <laughs> Taking them to Mexico. That yes. Is crazy. And they'll take that van and that trailer and they'll have their tow hitches and their tools and stuff. And three or four or five of them will ride up together in the van and they'll go to the auction and they'll repair the cars enough that they can tow them. The, they'll take axles. I, I've watched them. They put a lot of effort into it, a lot more effort than what it would cost to put that car on a transporter and send it to the border for 800 or $1,000. They'll take axle shafts apart and put them back into the wheel bearings so that the wheels can roll freely without burning up transmissions. Mm-hmm. They remove bumpers and chain trailer hitches to it so they can attach their tow bar. They put a lot of effort into it. Mm-hmm. Is it technically illegal? I'm sure they're violating some parts of vehicle code, especially with two vehicles in tow behind one. Not every state recognizes double trailers for, uh, uh, not. Um, wow, I'm right. I'm he should tied. be he should be driving not, double doubles for FedEx. Well, yes, not not <laughs> a, not every state recognizes double trailers that are not a traditional truck semi trailer converter dolly configuration. Uh, not every state allows recreational vehicles to pull doubles. You'll see that a lot of times. The guy will have his fifth wheel camper trailer and he's towing a boat behind it. Uh, perfectly legal in about half of the country. T- flat towing one car behind the other. 
They're not doing anything illegal, and they don't even need transporter numbers because together the two cars don't add up to over 10,000 pounds, so they're not DOT regulated in any shape or form. Now here, when we put three cars together, we're getting dangerously close, especially the guy with the van, to exceeding that magic 10,000 pound number in combination that could allow DOT to regulate it. Because here, that Chevy van and trailer, he's probably got 6,000 pounds between the two of them. Another car on it, he's probably just over 10,000 right there in combination, which would make it technically DOT regulated. A lot of guys aren't going to look at it that way because the van itself is under 10,000, so the power unit's under. But this is how they go after landscapers and other construction contractors. Once they hook that trailer to their pickup truck, they're over 10,000. They become regulated. That said, this is never going to get stopped unless a car starts falling off of it. They just turn a blind eye to it because your average cop doesn't understand what they're doing, could be unsafe or illegal, and they don't want to bother. And what what really disturbs me when I see these personally going down the road, not the guys working hard trying to make a living, they're just doing what they need to do to survive, is the flagrant skirting of the laws. They'll take the Copart or IAA lot sticker off the window and put it in the back window or in the license plate spot because it looks so much like modern computer generated in transit tags. And they literally have no insurance. They hop in these cars and they drive them. And... That's uh hang on internet. I think we're okay. But um we got it we got a hiccup. Hang on internet. Yeah, we got a hiccup. Um okay, I think we're and we're back. So um I think that's me though. So if you're on the podcast, I just want to say that you were describing we've got two sets of vehicles. Um in the in the number one spot we've got a we got a van. We, Brian, you're better at this. Will you describe what are we seeing right now? We're, we're, we're looking at a Chevy Express passenger van, probably a 12 passenger van towing a one car trailer, which has a sedan loaded on it and then is flat towing behind the trailer, a small SUV connected with a tow bar. So we have a set of double vehicles being towed by a passenger van. And then in the number two spot, we have we, we have, we have uh, three sedans being flat towed uh, with temporary tow bar attached to the rear bumper of the first car and the front bumper of the middle car. And then another temporary tow bar attached in the same manner on the uh, between car number two and number three. And, and these vehicles will have no brakes. They'll have no breakaway brakes if something were to happen. And I can't see in the video, but. I guarantee you they don't have proper in-transit or transporter plates on them either. And on for my money, even though the front one's heavier, this one looks more dangerous. That one is more dangerous because the first one, the van with the car trailer, it is unlikely, but it is still probable that the car trailer has functioning electric brakes on it. So then you only have one vehicle that does not have working brakes on it. And the vehicle that doesn't have working brakes doesn't outweigh the combination of the other two. Here you've got heavy, heavy, light, which is the way you want to have it. You always want to have your first trailer in double trailers being the heavier of the two trailer. Otherwise, it starts swaying around. The other one, three are almost equal weight, and you're only going to have braking on the first vehicle, the, pa- the, the power unit, if you will. I would hate to have to panic stop that uh, <laughs> train right there. I'm surprised it's not in the left lane. <laughs> no, these guys are pretty good when I see them oh. on the road hanging off to the right-hand lane because mm. they don't like to go much above 45 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour, at least where I see them with this combination. Uh, and again, I'm not picking on them. They're they're sent up here to do a job. They're doing the best they can with the tools they have. Amen. It's the customer or their employer that thinks this is okay as a way to transport their cars. And that's the thing I agree with you is that um... – yeah, I I am not trying to uh, slam the workers or anybody. It's just that, once again, um, my guess is that the folks in charge of that operation are very critical about some other aspect of social irresponsibility. And yet, you're just willing to, let's just maybe cause a wreck on a regular basis. You know, sure. one of the things that used to bother me, I used to see um, when I was in California... Um, is pickup trucks 
stacked with pallets like to the moon. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I, I understand what it, you know, when you have limited resources and, and you need to make money or whatever, but, but dude, w- I mean, yes, number one, you, you get a medal because that is unbelievable what you're able to do. But wow, man. And then, and then they're on, you know, the 101 freeway. Like, dude, you're in five lane busy freeway traffic with that setup. Mm-hmm. And, and that's my problem. It's not people trying to make a buck. Everybody has a different uh, level that they can start at. It's be safe. Think about what you're doing. You're not the only one out there on the road. And just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. <laughs> and that's where I come from on this. I, Because uh, heaven knows I was not perfect when I started. I had a tow bar just like what they use were using in that picture earlier Rich. when I was hauling cars to the scrapyard at 16 years old with my half-ton Chevy step side. And all, you know. it, it's what we did. But I... I evolved and I learned from it. And that's all I ask is that we learn from this and we try to do better every day. Right. Just put a few less pallets on that thing next time and take the frontage road. Okay. Yeah. Um, what else do, Oh, we didn't go, let's go into the live chat. We got to back this up. Yes. I, and I see you uh, solo dispatching. No problem. We'll, 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 we'll talk. Okay. So, uh, Ty is in here. Ty says he loves you, but Ty, (laughs) I thought you loved Sue. (laughs) <laughs> uh so, so thanks buddy um and you are seeing if you're if you're tuning in right now you're seeing the current live chat on the screen i've backed it up to the beginning because we've been talking about it. I, I love actually i really love how we doing it it gets a good feel for what the industry is up to this week it's pretty interesting solo dispatching hey jay can we talk today i missed the zoom meeting and i sent an email so um yeah, we can. Actually, I'm busy today. Let's try to set something up tomorrow. Solo, re-email me. Um, and I and I hate to say those things. Like Ty knows this. Ty can't get me on the phone. I can get Ty on the phone whenever I want, but Ty can't get me on the phone whenever he wants. I I pretty much schedule everything now. I have to. You have to. I, I don't even know what day it is. Um, John at Finest Tone Recovery, what's up? Ty, Jay, Brian, what's happening? John, thanks for the photo, too. If you have something you want to send in, um, thank you, Ben, for the video. Thank you, John, for the photo. Send it to autotransportintel at gmail.com, and let's talk about it. Let's find out how are we doing. Two Bears is here, David Lies. Good day. Be a duck rain last day, seven days in a row. Wow. Wow. We should get a current photo of the stump. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chris is here. Oh, Ty's talking about roundtable. Yeah, we need to talk about that. Um, hey, everyone, DOT compliance where you don't have to wear a mask to comply. Nice. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Carlos ACB Logistics. What's up, Carlos? Good to see you. Sour is here. Sour is back. What's going on? Okay, cool. We're going to get to that 65-foot rule. Sour's like, 65-foot rule, please. Sure. That's awesome. Um, and let's see. Yeah, Carlos has a new trailer. Danny B is here. Hello, ETA crew. Dash greetings to Brian, Ty, and Jay. What's up? And um, cool. Oh, Chris is saying, new style flip-outs. Love these guys. Wonder why the insurance is rising. And that is, the, it, it is. It's a public service. Yeah. We're trying to keep the, it's not going to work. And he's absolutely right, because those that do it wrong get lumped in with those that do it right. And they rate the industry based on all actors, not just the ones that are doing it right. When the pallet guy does crash and there's pallets everywhere, that's not mine. (laughs) Uh, Victory Lab Transport. Hey, guys, I'm a little late, but I'm here. What's up, Devin? Thanks for tuning in, saying hello. Miss Daga, what's going on? Hellcat Izzy, I saw before. <laughs> yeah, but I think I know those pictures make the rounds. But uh, this is where we get to do a fine-tuned examination. Speaking of, let's go to the next one. Uh, what is next? We've got. Okay, here we go. Sixty-five foot rule. I'm wondering about the sixty-five foot rule. 
I have a Ram 3500. I was wondering if I remove the bed and register as a tractor, can I haul 50-foot trailers? If you remove the bed and you can get it registered where the registration and the title is branded as a tractor. A, in most states, it's a TT, whereas a pickup truck is a TK. Some states use different letter codes, but yes. If you can get it in your state registered as a tractor, then the same rules that apply to a tractor trailer apply, and there are no overall length rules as long as your trailer is no longer than 53 foot, except for a couple of states that allow you to have a longer trailer, such as Oklahoma, New Mexico, and Texas, where you can have 57 foot long trailers. That said, if you're trying to also comply as an automobile transporter and get permission under the federal law to use the overhang, then you still have to stay at 65 foot bumper to bumper, plus have cargo carrying capacity on your truck. So an over cab rack in your case. But the problem with the 65 foot rule and registering the truck, if you don't do it right, simply removing your bed and putting a fifth wheel on your frame does not make you a tractor. You have to take that additional step of having the registration show it as a tractor, which in some states requires a reconstructed vehicle inspection or a new title to be issued to the vehicle, something to that effect. So I don't know what state you're in. I don't know what the rules are in your state. But generally speaking, if your registration card says the truck type is tractor, then you are a tractor trailer. And if they write you a ticket for it in another state, you at least have a fighting chance to defend the overlength ticket and have it dismissed. Cool. So I hope that helps. And sorry for the delay on that, but I'm glad we got to it. And I think I just sent the email. I just shared that email address so that uh, if you have a question, because you can put it, you can put it in the comments below. If you missed the video, if you're here, put it in the live chat. If you miss us live, put it in the comments below. But let's say you catch the podcast. I shared the podcast link. I shared your business link. I shared on air at yourdotguy.com. Um, if you need help, you can email Brian on air at yourdotguy.com. That's the best way to get your attention fast. Is that right? Absolutely. And, and that email can be monitored by a couple different people. So even if I'm overwhelmed, like I am and like you are, Jay, right. somebody is going to tap us on the shoulder and say, hey, somebody's trying to get a hold of you on air at your dot com. And if you can't remember that, just go to your dot com. And there's a contact us link on that website as well. Very cool. Let's go to. We only got, man, I mean, we got less than 10 minutes. How'd that happen? Meaning it's oh, it's past 1220. It's crazy. You talk uh, too much. I, got, I talk too much? Really? Dang it. <laughs> Detroit adds new features to suite of safety systems to its Detroit Assurance suite of safety systems for the Freightliner Cascadia and Western Star 49X model spec with a Detroit powertrain. The features are intended to reduce driver strain, fatigue, and speed-related accidents. Uh, and the reason I'm bringing this up, because it is interesting. So they, they've got, you know, active speed intervention, active lane assist with auto stop, brake hold mode. Um, I want to mention why this is important. So the, the folks that are in favor of these driver's assist technologies are talking about how, you know, it is supposed to help. This is not... The question is asked, are advanced driver assist at systems, ADAS, such as collision mitigation, smart systems that clearly improve safety, are they idiotic systems causing needless distractions? And they say they're best considered neither smart nor dumb, but they do require some getting used to. The truth is, computers are not smart or stupid. They're operating on logic programmed into them. Once a driver fully understands how the equipment is programmed to react to various situations, the driver can effectively keep the system in the background. Drivers should think about collision mitigation and other assist systems not as limit extenders, but as backstops. The point of this article, then, was that, yes, we know that, like, let's say I'm driving a truck and it's got a governor. I'm like, man, this freaking thing sucks. But the point of the governor, I guess, is misunderstood from my point, from my point of view. 
but we have di it's differing points of view, right? Driver versus safety of systems lover. Well, Help it depends out. why the equipment is in place and how it is actually being deployed as opposed to how it's intended to be deployed by the engineers that designed it. So driver assist equipment by itself is not awful and it can pick up on and do what it says as the namesake driver assist. The problem with driver assist equipment is the technology is not perfect yet. So sometimes it malfunctions and that's when we'll have it slam on the brakes when it sees an ov overpass or get confused in a work zone. The other problem is the same problem that we find with professional pilots, which arguably have much tougher training standards than a commercial truck driver. When it does work right and you use it every day, you become complacent, you become reliant on it. And so then you become a little too relaxed while you're driving and you trust the truck to do the job for you. Overall, it's not bad stuff. Likening it to your reference of the speed governor, the speed governor, depending upon what the fleet's intention was when they installed it, most fleets intend to conserve fuel with it more than anything else. And I don't really believe speed governors are a safety measure, even though they're included in the current draft of the highway bill that's being debated in Congress or in the House of Representatives as we speak right now. It's in markup. Uh, it's funny you mentioned the two together because they're tied together in this new highway bill. They're looking to put speed limiters on all commercial vehicles at 65 miles an hour, but they'll give you five extra miles per hour if you equip your trucks with active driver safety equipment, such as automatic emergency braking, lane departure warnings, etc., So the scientists believe there's a correlation between all this. The problem with the speed governor isn't even that it makes you get there a little bit slower. It's that it takes away your ability to have that burst when you need it to react because human nature is we want to go as fast as our vehicle will allow us to go up to the speed limit or in most people's cases a little over. So we're running up against the governor when we're driving. If the governor said at 64 or 65, we're running at 65. You blow a tire out, there is no stepping on the throttle like you've been trained to to speed up. There is no extra boost of a mile an hour to get around an unsafe situation. And it imposes an artificial speed differential that you have no control over based on current traffic conditions. So where I have a problem with speed governors the crash statistics all say speed was involved. The most common uh, cause of a crash is failure to reduce speed to avoid a collision. What they don't say is that most of the truck-involved crashes that that is a causation of happen below 65 miles an hour anyhow. So s governing trucks at 65 is going to have very little effect on slowing trucks down and reducing the severity of the crashes because they're already happening in areas that are less than a 65-mile-an-hour speed limit. Um, speed governors should be optional. This other driver assist equipment should be optional. It works great for some people. Other people, it doesn't. Not everybody can get along with technology and understand how it is supposed to work. That said, I really do think we're going to see it as required uh, equipment in the next couple of years. And that's actually why I brought it up. And we're going to, Vistago's got a question in the live chat. We're going to go to that next, um, and then we're going to wrap up. But I, I choose news stories, not because I like them or, you know, find it fun to talk about. But if I know, I mean, this is not going away. They're not going to stop. Autonomous is not going away. Digital robots and whatever is not going away. Um, that's a joke. Terrible. But the point <laughs> is, is that this stuff's not going away. The government believes in it. Uh, companies believe in it. And it's only going to continue so, yeah, somehow we have to figure out how to keep our sanity and work within it, understand it for the best, you know, for the job it's trying to do. But on the governor thing, <laughs> you know, if when there's no police, everyone drives like a bat out of hell. Like, literally, mm -hmm. everybody. And you need, and except for that one guy that decides to drive as slow as possible. And now you have to navigate that situation. You need that extra speed. Sometimes when I speed, it's because I needed to get out of some crazy bat out of hell minus one situation. Well, here's something to think about. 
we don't want to travel in packs. So you either have to speed up or slow down to get out of the pack of vehicles. Here's something else to think about. Most states set their speed limit, not with the primary factor being what the road is engineered to handle, but rather the 70 or 75 percentile rule of speed limit is set by law based on traffic studies that 70% or more of the traffic already drives this speed on that stretch of road, that's where we get speed limit increases. Now, if we throw in a whole cluster of vehicles that a whole segment of uh, highway users that can't go any faster than X, it is going to make that formula inaccurate. The only way I can support speed limiters is if all vehicles were speed limited and they were variable based upon weather, traffic conditions, and the uh, posted speed limit in the area you're in. And that's only going to happen once we get to fully connected vehicles that can talk to each other so the vehicles move as a pack. Because there's been many a studies by the Department of Transportation and several state DOTs as well that show vehicles are the safest regardless of the speed they're traveling when they're all traveling at the same speed. So... The only way I can support speed limiters is once the vehicles are all intelligent enough to let it adjust accordingly and all the vehicles are talking to each other so that you don't get that one vehicle that's going slow. Now that causes another problem because then that has an inverse effect of taking away your ability to go slow if you're personally uncomfortable driving 65 or 70 or whatever the average traffic volume flow or traffic speed is in the area. And now we get a whole different set of... uh, Let's impose our will to go faster on certain people. So, again, there is no perfect answer. The perfect answer would be the drivers actually pay attention to driving and use their brain because the best speed limiter is your right foot when your eyes and ears are working. Right foot speed limiter. Sounds like a punk band. You know, um, and I also, that that one car going slow, I try to think, could be a student driver. Mm -hmm. There's no need to road rage this person. No, maybe maybe they know that their reaction time isn't that good anymore. Maybe they're new to the country. They're a tourist visiting and they don't know where they are. Maybe their car is having mechanical trouble and they're just trying to get it off the highway. There there could be a legitimate reason that they're going slow. But there's always that one person that just wants to tailgate them into a nightmare. Um, Let's go to Vistaga. Last question. How far, how, Brian, how far? can you off track legally the trailer i'm towing now is off tracking almost 18 inches and then he says you pop out of gear you know but i think he's talking about anyways that that question off tracking off center 18 inches wow um i don't know we'll call this one a stumper because i don't know off the top of my head what the regulation is Mm -hmm. but i believe I believe that your trailer cannot off track beyond the width of the mirrors of the truck that you're pulling it with so that you're not wider than the truck you're pulling it with. But I would have to look that one up and get back to you. I'll do some research. That's a that's an interesting question. But if you're off tracking 18 inches, that means you're a foot and a half over to the left or right into uh, the rest of your lane. Yes, your lane is 10, 12, 14 foot wide, depending upon the class of road you're on, but that still puts you dangerously close to somebody else. So let me look that one up and get back to you. But congratulations, you gave the first show stumper that I can't give you a definite answer on. That is great. That's what we'll do. That's the new stumper alert. (laughs) That's that's such a unique question that I was not prepared to answer that one. Well, and I tell you, um, it is Brian. It is amazing because you have so much information. It's nice to have a stumper here and there. We know you're human. Yeah. Thank yes. goodness. <laughs> we still have humans on this show. Well, uh, well, well no, I, I'm just an allegedly. analog robot. I'm, I'm an analog robot because I don't know what you're talking about with digital robots. Right, before. exactly. Um, as they call them on Blade Runner, skin jobs. And by the way, I said when speeding, I meant allegedly if speeding. Sorry for that mistake. You know, the opinions expressed on this show are, um, yeah, whatever that. (laughs) I I have a waiver written down somewhere. I read a great waiver, but I'm like, I can't read this every show. That'd be crazy. No. Uh, But I do need to create it as like a, one day we'll we'll have a waiver slide. 
right. I, I just need to wear a shirt that says I'm not an attorney, but I stayed at a Holiday Inn last night. Oh, nice. I like that. I'd wear that shirt. I, I've been accused by a couple of attorneys of uh, being dangerously close, if not over the line, of giving legal advice from right. time to time. Oh, I, you know, Part of what I do is give advice. Well, I just can't I, call it legal advice. And I'll tell you what, it, that, is a, that is something an attorney would say. Yes. One yeah. of them is a good friend of mine, and he, he's picked apart some of my published work telling me that it's dangerously close to legal advice for a non-attorney. Um, because, it, it, and what I just said now, I, I, I've got an attorney on me right now, probably like, oh, he just said, what did he say? He's talking about attorneys. <laughs> no, attorneys don't care. They're busy. They're making a lot She's of not watching your show. Yeah, exactly. She is. No, she's not. <laughs> she's not watching my show. And uh, that will never happen. <laughs> um, okay. Listen, it is well past our time. Um, so I want to thank everybody, especially thank you guys for jumping in the live chat. Um, Ty's again talking about the federal government. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> I can see the trailer in the driver mirror real good. That's what Vistaga says. Talk if he wants to see exactly how far it's off tracking, go to an open parking lot, take a gallon of water with you, pour a line of water in front of your truck once you're parked perfectly straight, drive through the water, and then you'll see the two wet tire tracks where they go off, then you can go out and measure and see exactly how far off you're off tracking. Find an open parking lot, start perfectly straight, wet up, wet in front of your truck a little wider than your truck and trailer, and drive through it slowly, and you'll see how the tire track's off track, and, and that'll let you see, because the perception in the mirror, it may not be as bad as you think it is, but that'll let you actually take a physical measurement when you measure from your outside left or outside right tire of the trailer to the outside uh, tire on the truck in the same position. That'll give you a good idea how far you're off dog tracking or off tracking. That is a really great idea. I just went to the FMCSA website and I, I did a search on off tracking, but I'm not seeing anything. But uh, It's probably not in their regulations. It'll probably okay. turn out to be a state level regulation, but mm. I'll do some research later. Cool. Very cool. This was a, a great show. Um, Vince Steiger, once I deliver it, I never have to see it again. Oh, it's a one-time haul. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, let us know. Keep us posted if you run into any issues, problems, or somebody says something. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that'd be, we, and we'd love to hear from you. And listen, everybody, if you've got anything, please let us know. Thank you for joining Brian and I today again on DOT Compliance and saying hello. And we'll see you soon. Yeah, just remember, we're not here next Wednesday because oh, yeah. somebody gets to go somewhere special. I'll, I'll be in Vegas. That's right. Yes. There's no DOT compliance next Wednesday. So we'll be back in two weeks. Thank you. Yeah, for so we're, we're not fancy enough to have a best of clip yet for you. So you'll just have to wait two weeks for us. So we will we will see you again on the 23rd, right? Yes. So 14, 23rd. We'll see you on the 23rd. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Stay Brian. safe. Thanks, guys. Day. Thank you. Peace mm -hmm. out. Okay, bye.